Hello everybody. Uh, we're gonna start with the uh, first case which is the steady state uh, molecular diffusion in case of unidirectional diffusion without chemical reaction and uh, again uh, we, we, uh, we are operating under the conditions of one dimensional flow and steady state molecular diffusion flow. So uh, for, for this case when we uh, apply the conditions to the general equation we will see that we will cancel the, the time dependence term and the reaction term because steady state with no reaction and this is how the equation will look like and then in case we are uh, let's say we are operating in uh, or using the Cartesian coordinates then this is how we, we expand this term and um, <clears throat> uh, in, in this case we will uh, we will uh, cancel two of these because we we have only uh, one dimensional uh, flow so uh, if it's only in z direction then it's going to be just dn by dz and and here you'd see that this was partial differential equation and then it's here um, uh, an ordinary differential equation because we have only one independent variable which is the uh, z um, <clears throat> and now uh, before dealing with the equation we want to or I would like to give you an example of a system that uh, that is uh, uh, unidirectional um, in, in one dimension and uh, with no reaction uh, and uh, I, I think it's it's interesting to see how we can adjust the conditions so that the the, the uh, these assumptions are valid so this uh, this example is called Arnold diffusion cell and this is uh, an equipment or an apparatus that is set so that we can uh, use it to uh, estimate the diffusion coefficient so what happens here is that is that we have um, like a very big reservoir of uh, of a liquid and there is a capillary tube or a tube where the liquid rises here so you can you can do this somehow to give the the tube uh, or the the the, um, the height of the of the liquid in the tube higher than the height uh, here um, and uh, we are, we are setting the temperature to be constant. This is all under atmospheric pressure or whatever the pressure that we are, we are applying or operating in. And uh, under these conditions, uh, the, the, uh, this liquid, let's say this is acetone for instance, the vapors of acetone are going to diffuse from the surface of the liquid to the uh, top size, uh, side of the, of the capillary tube or of this tube. Uh, so the diffusion is only in Z direction. And uh, and as you said, as we said, this is uh, unidirectional flow. So we have only diffusion of acetone or acetone vapor from this direct from this point to this point, without any diffusion from the other side. And to to achieve this, we have um, or we choose the liquid and the other gas, um, so that the gas does not have any diffusivity or it does not dissolve in this liquid. So the gas B is. Uh, there will be some of the gas B here, but there is no flux of B in this direction. So the 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 uh, the the flux of B downward is zero because there is no place for B to go uh, beyond the surface of the liquid. So this is how we can make sure that it is unidirectional flow, and at the same time we have a continuous flow of gas B so that. Uh, we, we, uh, we operate uh, under the steady state conditions so uh, this flow of gas B will uh, will purge any um, any vapors of acetone that reaches the top surface of the tube so that we make sure that the concentration of acetone here is always zero so we are maintaining the concentration of, uh, of acetone in the top side uh, equal to zero by this gas flow and the concentration of acetone at the uh, acetone vapor of course uh, at the interface of the liquid is going to be the the or the partial pressure would be equal to the vapor pressure uh, because it's pure acetone so this is uh, the, the 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 concentration here so we have here um, vapor pressure which is always constant we have here zero uh, partial pressure which is always constant as well so we have constant height of the liquid it's compensated with the liquid from the reservoir so we have um, um, like constant conditions constant concentration at the beginning and at the end and constant diffusion distance so everything is constant and this is how we can obtain steady state and this is how we can make sure that it is unidirectional flow. And of course, the the uh, diameter of this tube is not very big, so that we don't have it's, it's actually a small uh, small uh, tube. It's uh, just few millimeters, so we don't have any diffusion in the z direction. It's all uh, I mean in the radial direction. It's all in the z direction. 
<coughs> so it's one dimensional unidirectional it is um, uh, steady state it is uh, molecular diffusion because we don't have any convection here so uh, this is what happens component A vaporizes and diffuses in the gas phase and gas B flows uh, across the the open end of the tube and as we said the solubility of gas B in the liquid A is very low and then <coughs> the the there is no uh, there is no flux uh, across the uh, the surface of the liquid and uh, that's why we can consider B a stagnant gas um, and again the diffusion takes place in Z direction so we can uh, apply our equation to this system so the first equation we can get from the continuity equation is that, is that d in a by dz equals zero which means that the flux is constant this is what we got from here so this means that flux in z direction is constant and uh, now the next step is again um, this is uh, the same procedure we followed from the block diagram we need to get an expression for flux <clears throat> so this is the the expression of the flux that in az equals uh, this term negative cd a b d y a by dz plus y a uh, multiplied by the sum of the fluxes but here we said that b is a stagnant gas which means that the nb equals zero so here we have in az we have in az multiplied by y a so we can take this um, to get an AZ as a common factor and then from this equation we can rearrange it so that we have the NAZ as a function of YA um, and uh, this is this is a very easy equation to to be integrated in AZ is constant so uh, and we we operate under constant temperature constant pressure so we can consider that C and D AB are constants as well so this is how the integration will uh, look like um, very very simple integration dz is going to be integrated to z2 minus z1 <coughs> y uh, one uh, negative one over uh, one minus ya will be integrated to len one minus ya um, so this is uh, the equation after uh, applying the boundary conditions which are the limits of integration um, of course we know that y a2 is zero but we will just keep it uh, in in terms of y a2 so that it is a general form of the equation um, and uh, this is how what we get after integration but we 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 can rewrite the equation in this form which is kind of simpler form but to to understand what is this this term or how we got this term we need to understand first what is the y b l m YBLM is the logarithmic mean of YB. Logarithmic mean is one form of uh, the averages that we can calculate. So the, the most famous form of, an, form of an average is to get the sum and divide it by two. This is the numerical average. There is another form of the average which is the square root of the multiplication of the two values. So if it is Y1 and Y2, then it's square root of Y1 multiplied Y2. Uh, and there is one form which is called the logarithmic mean so the logarithmic mean is um, let's get a closer look here so logarithmic mean is the difference between the two terms divided by the len uh, the the division of the two terms so it's yb2 minus yb1 divided by len yb2 divided by yb1 this is a very famous form of of the average or a mean and we use it a lot uh, in, in many applications uh, and the most famous is the heat exchanger. We use this form of the um, of the uh, the, uh, uh, the the mean to get the what we call the logarithmic mean temperature difference in heat exchangers. Anyway, so this is the the YBLM, uh, and of course we have uh, a binary system. Uh, so YB2 equals one minus YA2, and YB1 equals one minus YA1. So this is, uh, an, I, I can replace each YB with 1 minus Y1, the corresponding Y1, of course. And this is how the equation will look like. I will cancel 1 with 1, and then I will end up with YA1 minus YA2. And if you look at this denominator here, which is len 1 minus YA2 divided by 1 minus YA1, it is exactly uh, what this, this term. This is exactly this. So we can rearrange this equation so that we say that len 1 minus ya2 divided by 1 minus y, uh, one, uh, ya1 equals ya1 minus ya2 divided by ybLm, which is this. Um, so this is how we can, uh, or we got this form of the equation. If we need to get um, an expression of the flux, then we can 
uh, use this uh, or, or get NA in, in, in the left hand side and the rest of the equation in the right hand side. Um, we are operating in the gas phase, so we can uh, assume it's an ideal gas if you are applying or operating at uh, normal temperature and pressure or normal pressure mainly. Um, and the Y would be partial pressure divided by total pressure and the concentration equal total pressure divided by RT. And this is how the equation uh, will, will look like in um, the, the case of using the, the gas uh, units. Um, and then uh, these two equations are called the equations of steady state diffusion of one gas through a second stagnant gas. This is the form of the equation. And now um, <clears throat> this is the, 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 the flux. So what we did here is we used the information that we know, that, uh, know about the two boundary conditions. Uh, about z equals 1 and z equals 2 and from these values we were able to get a constant or the value of the constant flux so if, if you look at all these terms they're all constants we have we don't have any variables here so this is d this is p r t z2 z1 p1 p, p2 p l m they, they're all they're all constant so i can calculate the value of the flux um, with with the knowledge of all these parameters um, i'm 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 um, Highlighting this because we will we will revisit the equation in in few minutes uh, with different uh, with different uh, boundary conditions or with different values of the of the boundary conditions. Um, but before we go to this, uh, I would like to uh, talk about one nice application of this. So the, the, there are many uh, industrial applications where we have uh, unidirectional flow. Uh, it, it's not necessarily. Um, um, uh, molecular diffusion uh, because in industry we mainly uh, depend on the convection because uh, you can control the flow and the flow uh, and the turbulence will affect the mass transfer coefficient and enhance, enhance mass transfer so w we do have better control uh, on mass transfer and and it's it's uh, much higher flux in case of convection than it is in case of molecular diffusion but uh, th th in, in, in in theory the 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 concept of having one one uh, flow from one from one uh, phase to the other uh, in one direction um, it's, it's which is the unidirectional diffusion is uh, applicable in many cases such as absorption and humidification um, so for instance absorption is a gas phase uh, and the liquid phase it's a solvent that dissolves one of the component in the gas phase so the diffusion goes only from the gas phase to the liquid phase and the, the solvent does not does not evaporate so this is this is the absorption as a unidirectional uh, uh, diffusion or, or mass transfer um, but since we we are talking about molecular diffusion uh, there is one very nice theory and it's a famous theory about the convection uh, or the convective mass transfer which is called the film theory and this theory assumes that uh, in case of convection where mass transfer is due to the turbulence in the system uh, the theory assumes that there is a very very thin layer of the uh, of the gas at the interface of the liquid where mass transfer takes place uh, so this is a uh, you, you can assume that it's a stagnant uh, gas layer that is sticking to the surface of the liquid and mass transfer takes place here by molecular diffusion and after this mass transfer is done and it's it's just uh, turbulence around and as the turbulence increases the thickness of this film decreases and this is this makes the mass transfer faster and easier so this is the theory and uh, based on this theory uh, we can uh, get a form of the convection mass transfer coefficient uh, and this can be got by uh, equating the flux uh, by molecular diffusion and the flux by uh, by um, convecta convection mass transfer or convective mass transfer and by equating these two we can get an expression of kc which is going to be uh, kp uh, dab multiplied by pressure divided by the pblm uh, divided by delta so this is this is uh, like one uh, one theory that um, can be used to uh, predict the value of the mass transfer coefficient. We will talk about mass transfer coefficient in detail uh, when we go to the the convection mass transfer uh, part of this course. Uh, but just keep keep this in mind that this is one uh, one theory that uh, that c can be used to predict the the value of mass transfer coefficient. Um, and now. Uh, 
back to the equation so we were able to get the value of the flux or the expression for the flux but we were not able to get the concentration profile so if we want to get the concentration profile then we need to uh, go back to the equation and um, um, again this is the equation that we have and we will integrate it but in this case as I said um, we will do the integration and, and I did it another way here um, because I want to show that it's 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 the same if you are using one boundary condition or the boundary conditions as limits of integration or you're using the boundary conditions as um, as, as um, like inputs to the equation to get the constants after uh, integrating the equation they're both going to give the same the same output so this is uh, uh, the, the the equation and it says that in uh, over C D A B they're all constant so I'm gonna call it C1 and then we will do the integration and from the integration we can uh, we can we'll have two constants here C1 and C2 and from C1 and C2 we can uh, or, or using the boundary conditions we can get the values of C1 and C2 and the way we use the boundary conditions is by substituting in the equation twice once with the first boundary conditions and once with the second boundary conditions uh, so the first boundary condition which is at the surface of the liquid which is z equals z1 then y equals y a1 and this is um, the substitution i have y a1 instead of y uh, z1 instead of z so these are all constants okay uh, z1 is constant y a1 is constant they are, they are all constant but for the second boundary condition we will put any value of uh, of z and any value of y a2 so z2 and y a2 are not necessarily the uh, the 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 second point or the 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 uh, the top uh, part of the of the tube and then by solving the equation simultaneously we can get the value of c1 and the value of c2 um, and from this we can get the concentration profile and and here we have c1 which is uh, is is the the constant that we have here um, so uh, and, and c2 of course is uh, we got it and by some simplifications we can get this form of the equation or we can write it in the in terms of yb instead of ya so you see we have here ya okay uh, and we have here z so this is how we can get the equation or get the concentration profile which is a relation between y and z uh, it's not y1 not y2 not y3 it's just y and z so this is uh, this is the the form of the equation so we we got uh, we got the constants from here i think i said something wrong so this is the second boundary condition but this equation is a function of of z i'm sorry i think i, I said it wrong so this these are constants so they must be functions of z1 and z2 i'm, I'm sorry i think i think i said it wrong uh, so let, let me correct this. So I have this as the first and second boundary conditions. This is this is Z2, the, the same Z2 as before. And we got C1 and C2, and by substituting here, we can get the equation as Ya as a function of Z. So this is this is what we have here. I'm sorry, I, I, I said it wrong. Um, so uh, this is how, how the, the uh, concentration profile looks like. And again, we can reproduce the uh, the flux by combining the two equations the expression of C and the expression of uh, C1 and the, the relation between C1 and N so it's going to give us the same flux uh, as before so again I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, showing you here that uh, it doesn't matter how you define the boundary conditions either you define them uh, by substitution substituting in the equation with the constants or you put it as boundary conditions they both are going to give the same output and uh, from this we can draw the concentration profile um, and here you will we will uh, we'll do something that is kind of nice to get this concentration profile you see here this is z minus z1 divided by z2 minus z1 and this is what we can call a dimensionless distance uh, which has a value from 0 to 1 so if it's z equals z2 then this is 0 if it's z1 uh, I mean Z, Z2 is going to be 1, if it's Z1 it's 0, so this has uh, like a very limited range and it's dimensionless, dim dimensionless. so we will not worry about the dimensions of the distance, uh, so this is one nice way of putting the dimensionless or, or the, the dimension uh, or, the, or the distance in a form of a dimensionless uh, number or a dimensionless term. Um, and uh, this is the term that we're going to use and we will put any um, just random values of y1 and y2 
and we'll use them to plot the equation. This this is the, the form of the equation, and you see it's it's uh, kind of, of a power uh, power relation. So we we will expect that it's, it's, it's not going to linear. There should be some um, some uh, curvature in the in the equation. Um, and uh, this is what we get from the sol solution of the equation. This is the concentration profile. We have here high concentration of A and then low concentration of A at Z equals 1 and the, the other uh, way for B. So the fusion is taking place in this direction and B is the stagnant gas like this. Uh, if you can get, if you want to get the average concentration uh, throughout the whole distance, we can get it by uh, integrating y b dz divided by the integration of dz. So this is the main definition of the of the average. And by doing the integration, you would see that the average uh, value is the logarithmic mean of b. So it's uh, it's kind of a nice thing to know. Um, so this is the first type of uh, molecular diffusion in case of steady state unidirectional one dimensional uh, molecular diffusion next time inshallah we will talk about the pseudo steady state and we will understand what is what does it mean what is different between steady state and pseudo steady state so i'll see you then inshallah goodbye